heart of New Delhi, the Indian Institute of Technology is where the country's brightest minds are trained. Recently, its computer engineering courses have been upgraded with a new focus, automatic computer learning, a key area of artificial intelligence. Remember, we, we started in the beginning right, talking about machine learning and AI. Right, the, the whole goal there was about how we could make these uh, gadgets right, which could work or which could behave like humans. Right? That was the starting of AI. For these students, this training not only enhances their CVs, but also boosts their chances of securing top jobs. This class specifically focuses on the ma foundational mathematics of building AI. So, which is a skill that is clearly lacking in the market. So yeah, it, it would definitely help me. I have seen my friend and I have seen a huge impact in their careers just because, just by adding AI in their resume. In January, the government announced a budget of over 55 million euros to establish centers of excellence for artificial intelligence. It aligns with India's ambition to position itself as a future leader in the field. In the suburbs of Delhi, this company specializes in data annotation. Its over 2,400 employees work around the clock to extract information from millions of documents. This data is then used to train and develop artificial intelligence systems. Rohan Agarwal, the founder of this startup, says he has a range of clients across sectors from healthcare, agriculture, and retail to automobile. These are images taken from a dashboard mounted on a car. Um, and essentially, what we have to do is we have to look at the image um, and identify different traffic signs, signals, pedestrian people. Basically, you've got to give that knowledge to the machine so that it can learn from it and then make decisions on its own. One of India's main assets is its skilled workforce capable of handling critical tasks essential to the development of AI. Definitely the talent pool is there and that's a big advantage for us. Also the language barrier is not there. India is an English speaking country, everyone speaks in English very, very fluently. The cost arbitrage is there, right, where we can offer highly competitive rates, um, you know, to get this work done. In 2023, private investments in AI-related businesses in India reached nearly 1.4 billion euros on par with countries like France and Germany. Among the various sectors attracting such investments is healthcare. In South India, in Bangalore, this hospital's radiology and neurosurgery department deploys AI as soon as any patient shows any symptoms of stroke. The AI does mark out a significant portion of the brain that is undergoing loss of blood supply. This is very subtle and uh, can be missed. Using this imaging, AI helps Dr. Pratham Bisani spot brain hemorrhages that are invisible to the naked eye or not detected by a CT scan all within minutes. The earlier you are able to detect, the earlier you are able to give the required medications, the higher chances that the functional recoveries are better. So time is everything when you're trying to treat a patient with stroke. Behind this revolution is a 100% Indian company. These engineers, with the collaboration of doctors, have created algorithms that can also detect lung cancer at an early stage and speed up the diagnosis of tuberculosis. This is the raw chest X-ray. Uh, and this is the AI version of it, where it has found out that there is opacity here and radiological signs of TB have been confirmed. The WHO and the US Food and Drug Administration have approved this technology, which is already in use in hospitals across France and the UK. Above all, Cure AI is designed to make healthcare more accessible in developing countries, particularly in rural areas where medical infrastructure remains poor. Coming from India, we could see that the lack of radiology expertise uh, was very obvious because you are dealing with a very needy part of the population. Uh, they are not losing one more day of their wages because they can get screened on the same day, get the radiology report on the same day, and then get medicines and follow-up tests done on the same day. Earlier, without AI, they would get the screening done, 
the scans will go to the city in a week and then two weeks later the reports will come out and then they will get the follow-up tests or the medicines done. So that whole one month cycle has reduced to just a couple of hours. For New Delhi, big questions are how to regulate artificial intelligence, fight deep fakes, protect personal data and safeguard national security. The Indian government is now considering AI-specific legislation and developing a strong national strategies to stake its claim in a sector dominated by the US, China and the European Union. It wants to promote innovation, like the US government believes the policy should be, but also wants to ensure that if there are risks to individuals and citizens, it wants to protect the rights of those citizens. India is a leading voice on global AI governance, but I think the real value that India will add is to paint a vision that can be adopted in the developing world. By year end, India plans to launch its own generative AI model to compete with the USA's chat GPT and China's latest hit, DeepSeek.